This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Sylvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. Five fans, four fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is June 22nd, 2023. It is draft day. Jonathan Osborne here, as always, joined by my co-host, Luke Sylvia. Luke, we were supposed to have a special guest for this episode, but last minute bailed on us. What's going on, man? <laughs> they always reliable as a guest, Kevin Tucker, producer Kevin. People are going to be hit pissed the old bail on us when they find out that Kevin was this so close bad. to being on this episode. And then just he's like, nah, I don't so feel like close. it. And for the first time ever, he was like, hey, I want to come yep. on. We didn't have to ask him this time, and then he, whatever. I'm, we're not bitter, but I have another question. You said draft day, and the first thing I thought of was Drake's draft mm-hmm. day. Do you like just ceremoniously play that on like draft days? I did last year because I saw someone post about it. I was like, I haven't listened to that song in a while. I'll put it on. I maybe listen to that song once a year, and it's always on draft day. I, I wasn't planning on it, but now I might. Um, yeah, I was a big Johnny Manziel guy, right. so that that song kind of stirs up, you know, some emotions for me. So I try to stay away from it if I can. But if there's any day that you're going to listen to it, like today's the day. You have to. You have to. Five years later, how is he the man still? You know. I yeah, and it's so funny, like to think about like Drake has been in my life forever now. So to think back to when he made that song, like five years later, like, dude, like you're like almost 10 years later from that point, you know, and you're, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's still the man. Music is so different now, not to go on off on like a whole (laughs) tangent, but like with the internet and streaming, like music is so, so, so much different than it was even when, when that song came out, but all right, folks, today is the day we're here to get you ready for the NBA draft. Uh, We're going to cover Jeff Weltman's pre-draft media availability from Monday. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk some draft rumors that have been coming out over the course of the last couple of days. We have our draft poll that we took to social media to kind of get listener and and Magic fan feedback. We're going to cover the results of that. And then we'll give our final draft thoughts, predictions, whatever you want to call it in this episode But again, just trying to get you guys primed for the draft tonight. So we're going to try to move pretty quickly here, not spend a ton of time talking about any one particular topic. But remember, if you are in the Orlando area tonight, you can get your draft tickets, your draft party tickets, I should say, in the Orlando Magic app or at orlandomagic.com. The doors open tonight at Amway Center for the draft party at 630. The draft starts at 8. We will be there sitting in section 106. So if you're in the building, if you want to come and hang out with a bunch of other Magic fans, come sit with us in section 106 or 105, 107, you know, 106 adjacent. And if you want to come say what's up, please come say hello. We would love to see you guys. We'd love to talk to you and get your draft thoughts. Before the draft and after the draft, our boy Ben is going to be outside of Amway with our camera rig set up, getting your draft predictions, what you want to happen, and then getting your draft reactions after the draft so be sure to seek him out he'll be the guy with the tripod and the light and the camera and the microphone so find our guy ben it's going to be a lot of fun looking to get some good content out of that luke let's jump right into this here so jeff weltman had his pre-draft media availability on monday met with the orlando magic media uh i'm guessing probably like the last or no they'll have the the post draft media availability Thursday night. So I guess that will be Kobe's like last official magic press conference. I'm sure he'll have a piece that will come out tomorrow night or tonight, Thursday night, as you guys are listening to this. And then Kobe's moving on to LA. But anyways, I wanted to just go through a couple of the quotes here from Jeff Wellman and get your thoughts on it. Luke, he talked about the magic have hard earned flexibility, you know, the flexibility that they have. It was not easy to, to get there. They had to go through some losing seasons. They had to trade away valuable assets. But now that they have that hard earned flexibility, quote, we want to be disciplined with our flexibility. What do you think when you hear that, Luke? I think it just means that you're not going to 
do anything that is on a whim. You're not going to make any crazy draft night trades, take a big swing in, in terms of getting a star, whatever it might be. To me, that's just what it means. We're not going to force anything. We know that we've got a lot going, but it's taken a lot to get here, and we're not about to mess it up with one move. To me, it's just I'm relieved to hear that. He also talked a little bit later on about you know not skipping steps. And to me, that should take us out of like, are we trading for Damian Lillard? Are we trying to do a sign and trade for a guy like, you know, Kyle Kuzma? I know Bradley Beal has now been traded. So, you know, we're taking ourselves out of that. Christoph Porzingis is being traded to the Boston Celtics, which is crazy. But to hear that, like, hey, it, it took us a long time to get where we are. And we want to be smart with the flexibility. We, we want to maintain that if we can, you know, there might be a move that comes along that. You just can't turn down that may you know, take you out of that flexibility. But the fact that they want to be disciplined with that, they, they're they not. And again, the point about skipping steps, like that's huge. Like it took us a long time to get here. We're building something really special. Everyone kind of around the league realizes that. And we want to make sure that we're you know, continue to be smart with the decisions that we make. He was asked about, you know, uh, you know drafting two players in this draft, potentially in the first round. And, and what that means, or has their thinking um, changed at all uh, with given the amount of young guys that they already have on the roster? And he said, giving each player a pathway to success and growing into their potential here. And then later on, he said, you hope to get to a place where rookies aren't just handed minutes. Luke, when you hear him commenting on giving players a pathway to success, growing into their potential here, do you think that he, we're going to be drafting? Like, if we draft a guard, does that mean one of our current guards is like automatically out of the rotation because we're looking to make sure that the guys we're drafting have a pathway to success? Or are we more so putting stock into the comment about getting to a place where rookies aren't just handed minutes? Yeah, I, I think it's it's got it, to me. I, Really, when I hear this quote from Jeff, that was my favorite thing that he talked about and his favorite answer he gave. Just because I think that it speaks to a couple different things. I think it speaks to the fact that he believes that this team is going to grow and have success and find their role and find their niche on this team. Even more, obviously, than they did last season. They've got a lot of ways to go. So that's what I took initially, right? Like He's got full belief in the team that they're going to progress and that it's not going to just be this, you know, carousel of, Oh, we're, we got a top pick. We're going to give them minutes. I think this also speaks to the fact that as the magic get better, the picks are going to be later in the draft. We already know they're not crazy about second round picks. They exchange it for cash, future assets, whatever that might be. So it just tells me that like the magic are going to progress and we're going to get to a point where players aren't getting minutes because they're not going to be as high quality players either. And it just builds a lot of excitement, in my opinion, to really the success that I believe Jeff is alluding to that this team's going to have in the future and that he believes he's got a lot of the pieces already. I think we sort of suspected this like at six, any of the guys that we've been talking about drafting there, whether it's Cam Whitmore or Asar Thompson or Taylor Hendricks or Jarris Walker or whoever, there doesn't really seem to be a clear path for any of those guys to start immediately as good as we think they are as prospects. Like when you just go through what is likely going to be the magic starting lineup, Markel Fultz, either Jalen Suggs or, or Cole Anthony, maybe even Gary Harris, probably not incredibly likely, but I still think there's an outside chance that Gary starts day one. Franz Wagner, Paolo Bancaro, Wendell Carter Jr. Like all of those guys that we talked about, None of them are better than the guys that we already have in place. So they're, we're not talking about, hey, you took this guy with the sixth overall pick. You need to start him. We're lucky enough that the Magic were bad enough at the beginning of the year and then good enough the rest of the way where they almost made the playoffs, but then still ended up with a really good pick in what is, by all accounts, a, a pretty solid draft, that you're drafting a really good player, but your team is still good enough that you're not going to be expecting a ton out of that guy, at least from day one. So the the pathway to success and talking about rookies not just being hand in minutes, like, yeah, you, maybe you don't want to draft a guy that like you don't think he'll ever be able to start. 
but it doesn't necessarily mean that these guys are going to be playing a ton of minutes just because they're a high draft pick. The next quote that I have here, he says, the draft will inform free agency a little bit. So we've kind of suspected this. You know, we, We've talked about how in this draft, the number one goal should be to come away with shooting one way or another, whether that is drafting a shooter, whether that's moving one of these picks for a shooter, you need to come away from the draft with shooting. And if you don't, that means like immediately you're turning to free agency. And like, <laughs> I think you lose quite a bit of leverage in negotiations, specifically with shooters, because you don't draft a shooter. It becomes incredibly apparent that your number one goal in free agency is to acquire shooting. What did you think about this comment that the draft will will inform their free agency a little bit? Yeah, not not a shock at all. I mean, you think that I mean, think logically, right? Like Magic have two top 11 picks. Chances are uh, we're hoping and thinking they're going to, you know, take a swing. There's reports, right? Jonathan Gavoni, Draft Express, reports are out there that they're going to try to at least get a shooter with the 11th pick or move off of it is what it seems like. So I think that, you know, that's really the only options. So for me, yeah, if you get a shooter at 11, maybe you don't need the veteran wing. I do think if you trade that 11th pick, you're going to be trading for a veteran wing in that scenario. uh, If you do trade that 11th pick, in my opinion. So either way, you're walking away with a shooter. But yeah, that's kind of my takeaway from it. This was one of my favorite quotes from the entire availability when he said it's the NBA. Never believe anybody talking about you know potentially making trades around draft night and having to you know be a little bit transparent with teams if you want to get a deal done you know you have to let them know what you're trying to do and he said that there's certain teams around the league and certain people around the league that you know you can divulge a little bit more information to and it's not going to get out and there's other people that you know that you really can't tell things to because it will get out so i just thought that that was really funny um the next thing here he mentioned it's a good draft class and that they can go a number of ways having two picks. We've been talking about this since the draft lottery that nobody really has a good handle on what's going on because there are so many players in that 6 to 13 range that you can make arguments for and them being kind of really close in terms of overall talent. And the Magic kind of have multiple needs in this draft. So Jeff Weltman saying, hey, we can go a number of ways doesn't make me feel any more confident about like one particular thing happening on draft night. Yeah, I don't I don't think that you can there's just no way that you can know for sure where this is going to go. But yeah, I, I don't think that there's, you know, any type of thing that I'm thinking is going to happen uh, for sure, for certain. You can't be sure and especially after hearing Waltman talk about it, highly unlikely this draft even honestly goes the way that we think it's going to go, whatever that one thing we convince ourselves of is. The next quote here, we have a lot of evaluating to do this season. We have a lot of young guys that we expect to take steps, is the quote from Jeff Weltman. And Luke, in 2017, when Jeff Weltman and and John Hammond were hired uh, ahead of the draft, they made it a point that they were really evaluating everything within the organization, the staff, the, the players, obviously the head coach, Frank Vogel, who they gave, you know, another year there. Um, not only were they evaluating then, you know, the, the cap situation that they inherited, you had the, the core of Vooch and AG and Evan Fournier and, and Terrence Ross and it took them a couple of seasons before they got to the point that they were ready to move on from that. But the fact that they're still evaluating the young talent on this team as they look to build around, you have to think Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner, probably the only untouchables on this team. Paolo, absolutely untouchable. Franz, I would guess, is pretty close to untouchable if he's not untouchable. They're still evaluating how these guys fit and if they're going to fit well around around Paolo and Franz and if they're going to be long-term fits here. Not only are they evaluating these draft prospects that are coming in, but the young players currently on this team, a lot of them are still being evaluated. Yeah, and you have to think about the the core or like the two quote-unquote untouchables on this team unequivocally are are Franz and Paolo and they just got solidified so they were just solidified in Franz's second season Paolo's first season and one of the best rookie seasons we've ever seen and that's what it took for them to be part of that core and be recognized that way 
which is why everybody else, like you said, is being evaluated still. So it's a you know it, it's the kind of the the, the the trek that a bunch of these teams have to go through when they're rebuilding. But I do think it ties into um, you know just the other thing else that Jeff has said up to this point in this presser, talking about alluding to the fact that they're not going to you know get careless with their with flexibility. And I, I think that they just kind of go hand in hand, right? They're just going to continue to evaluate. They're just going to take their time and they're going to see what they've got. And I think that the Magic fans should, like you said about, you know, when you kind of offered your response to about them kind of not pushing all their chips to the middle just yet, is that it makes you feel safe. It makes you feel good to hear uh, someone in the Magic front office say something like this. And I think we're all still, you know, the, when Jeff and John came in, they were picking up the pieces. And that's what they've really been doing ever since. Yeah, they had a couple of playoff runs, but now we're finally to the point where our guys are young and we get them from the starts of their career. And we also can say we've got a core established and we have the front office in place that has the right mindset to make this thing go. The last quote here, he said, for the most part, we've gotten to see who we want to in terms of workouts. I don't really think it's like anything breaking, but it is interesting that they didn't get everyone that maybe they wanted to in for workouts. I know like Kobe Bufkin is a guy who, you know, potentially in that 11 range, the magic might've wanted to take a look at. I don't know if, have we gotten confirmation that Kobe Bufkin worked out for the magic? I know we've heard jet Howard was the other Michigan guy. I don't think we ever got confirmation. Kobe Bufkin worked out for the magic or not. So you have to think like, who are the guys that they didn't have the ability to work out. Mm. So the Magic have drafted guys that they haven't worked out in the past. Paolo Bancaro, Jalen Suggs, you know, in each of the last two drafts. So uh, don't put it past the Magic to not draft someone that they worked out. In fact, sometimes the contrary is true. The Magic don't draft people that they work out. We all know how that kind of goes. Yeah, and the other thing that I'll add to that as far as like who they've worked out, who they haven't, I don't know if you saw the tweet the other day from uh, at RyanHammer09 on Twitter. I don't know the credibility. I don't know how he gathered his data. He's got about almost 9,000 followers. Says in his bio he's a basket, like basketball scouting, insights, analytics, bracketology, yada, yada. So I'm assuming he just a, does a bunch of stuff on his page, builds his brand that way. But he had a tweet of the number of prospects, uh, prospect workouts for all NBA teams. Number one looks like Charlotte with 106 known workouts. The Magic 22, right? Magic 22, to give you an idea, OKC, they're also known to keep stuff close to their chest. 21 for them, right? Um, And I think that that's just a sneaky game that you play. So we know it happened with Paolo last year in terms of workouts and ends up that he was the pick the whole time. The Magic often, I feel like, use these workouts just to rule people out, not necessarily rule them in. Like, you know, I'm sure that they have a pool of guys that like, okay, these guys are on the table. Let's work them out and rule them out if they don't have a good workout, if they don't interview well, if they don't grade out well, if they don't test well, whatever that might be. So I don't think that the, the workouts give anybody an upper hand in terms of these players besides not eliminate them from the pool of what the Magic are looking at. So, yeah, I think that it's not a surprise the Magic have only worked out 22 people. Uh, and I don't think it'll be a surprise if the Magic end up taking one of two of their picks in the first round of guys that maybe we didn't even hear about them working out. Yeah. The next kind of rumor or, or, or piece that I want to talk about. So our buddy Jake Fisher with Yahoo put out a piece today just talking about you know 2023 draft intel. In terms of the Magic, most notably, uh, Cam Whitmore, I guess, uh, with some of his medical information, seems to be falling in the draft. Some draft uh, mock drafts have him going as low as 10 now, where earlier in the week we saw him draft like as high as 4 to Houston. So is he really slipping? Is it just kind of smokescreen kind of stuff? Who really knows? But I did find that pretty interesting. And then for the Magic... Uh, really only talked about Anthony Black, and I'm just going to flat out read the excerpt from the article from Jake Fisher. You can uh, you know, find this at sports.yahoo.com. Jake says, The Magic are indeed considering guards with size at number six, 
Arkansas playmaker Anthony Black had a strong visit with Orlando and believes he's very much in play for the sixth selection. Black's camp initially showed resistance to working out for the Magic, sources said, because of Orlando's perceived logjam in the backcourt with a trio of first-round guards in Markel Fultz, Jalen Suggs, and Cole Anthony. Uh, Anthony will become extension eligible this summer and is considered to have a great relationship with the Magic front office, but Orlando has left, left various personnel with the impression that drafting a guard like Asar or Black would lead the Magic to exploring trade opportunities for one of Suggs or Anthony. They didn't tell me that, Black told Yahoo Sports, but that's what I figured they'd do if they picked me. So I guess it's customary for the night before the NBA draft that all of the prospects that have been invited to the green room meet with the media in a ballroom. I'm guessing at the hotel that the uh, or wherever they're, the prospects are, are staying ahead of the draft. So, Luke, what do you make of this, you know, Anthony Black? I, I don't even want to call it a rumor. Yeah, I, it's very tough to really get a pulse and really know what's what and I think that I understand like like the as far as Anthony Black is hesitation because I would think that that makes sense, right? Like there's a log jam for sure and that if you're looking at if you're Anthony Black like oh these a lot of guys with a lot of talent, a lot of not only just a lot of talent, a lot of potential. And I think it can be very intimidating to know that you could go on a team where guys are still proving themselves. And I think that there's like, it's a totally different environment when you go in and guys already got their spots, right? But these dudes are going to be fighting tooth and nail. I'm a little hesitant. I understand that it really is like, I do understand where Anthony Black is coming from, but I almost wish that if Anthony Black ends up being the pick at six, I wish that I didn't hear this report about like, I didn't want to do it. Like it just seemed like there wasn't going to be an opportunity right away. And it's like, you got training camp, you got summer league, you got preseason to prove that you can fight for these minutes. But I do think it's a respect thing as well. Like he knows these guys are talented and have a lot of potential. So I get it. But also this contributes to the thinking of at six, you probably are drafting best player at 11 is where you're taking, you know, a, a shooter or trading, like I said earlier for a shooter as well. Yeah, I think it's, you know, pretty interesting because, you know, his camps, thinking because of Orlando's perceived log jam with Markel, with Jalen, with Cole Anthony, people are like, oh, well, why does that necessarily mean that you have to trade one of those guys? It's just like, that's really the most logical thing. And I think for no other point, then like you, you're just going to have more backcourt minutes with a guard who at least right now, as it stands, can't shoot the ball. And you ask anybody that has a decent idea what they're talking about with the Magic and what the biggest offseason need is. Even Jeff Weltman in his exit interview at the you know in the middle of April was asked like you know what what do you think you need to do to improve the team? And the number one thing that he mentioned was shooting. So everybody knows that this team needs to add shooting, which some people have brought up like maybe Orlando is putting this kind of information out there to make it seem like they're going to take him at six to try to get a team like Washington or Utah to trade up to six. If they're good with taking a guy, you know, at eight or at nine, you know, just willing to, you know, a little smoke screen season here and, and try to increase the leverage that you have with that pick for a team that might be desperate enough to to trade up. So I, I think there's a, a lot of that going on this time of year. Like Jeff said, it's the NBA. Never believe anybody. There's tons of things happening. I know we're going to talk about the draft in a few minutes, but I just cannot wait to get to Thursday night so that we no longer have to guess and speculate and talk about these types of rumors. But I really don't want the pick to be Anthony Black because I still really believe in Fultz, in Suggs, in Cole Anthony. I feel like each of them in different ways showed enough significant improvement this year that like I'm not like oh let's bring in Anthony Black who right now as it stands I don't know is better than any of those guys and I don't think he is when the team seemingly has other needs unless I couldn't see them not wanting to extend Markel that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me I would lean towards signing Cole to an extension but if 
the team does not want to sign Cole to an extension or maybe his asking price is a bit too steep, I could see them saying, all right, he played really well the last part of the season. Let's kind of sell high here. And then Anthony Black is now your backup point guard. Then it would make sense to me. What do you, what's your reaction? What's your thinking? We go into tomorrow night with the six pick, the Orlando Magic select Anthony Black. What What is your thinking and your opinion as far as the front office, their mindset? What are you thinking if that happens? Well, I really like Anthony Black as a prospect. You, know, you and I did our magic big board on the last episode, and someone commented, like, no Anthony Black. Like, this isn't just like our overall prospect big board. This is our big board, What who we would want for the magic, right? And Anthony Black just falls behind all of those other guys that we've talked about because of the reasons that we're outlining now. The log jam in the backcourt, not really a shooter. Don't want to give up on Markel Suggs or, or Cole Anthony necessarily just yet. So if he's the pick, one, I know he's going to be awesome. Like mm-hmm. his feel for the game, special passer. He's not to the level of Giddy, but like is a special playmaker, really good defender, really good athlete. So good size. He's going to be good. He could be he- good here in Orlando. I'm just really concerned about the fit. So if he's the pick, I'm like, all right, they just fell in love with this guy. And then my next thought will be who's on their way out. Got to be. I mean, you have to, you have to be thinking that way. I, I think that it's, you know, looking over your shoulder, right? Like Jalen Suggs didn't have a great rookie year capitalized on, you know, maybe motivation from the previous year had a great year last year all things considered comparatively Cole Anthony found his own at that point those guys are looking over their shoulder and I think if nothing else it puts a fire under them to just keep you know keep it going not that they need it right I know those guys don't need it but it does say like oh shoot like (laughs) the front office just took a guard big guard too and Markel same for him. He's not safe. I think this year Markel's got to have another leap. In my opinion, I think that like, you know, I don't. I just don't think the counting stats are like scream untradeable, right? Now we know what he has. He has the impact on winning. But if Anthony Black comes in here and just has a great command of the offense and shows great flashes sooner than you think, he kills it in summer league. He kills it in training camp. He kills it in preseason. These guards got to be a little bit worried about it. They won't tell you that. But, you know, Cole Anthony relegated to six man last year. In our eyes, wasn't a relegation because he played great, played his butt off as a six man. But he can't be feeling too confident, uh, despite what he's going to say if Anthony Black comes in the locker room. Yeah, I, I feel like there's so much that we could say about this. But depending on when you're listening to this, like 12 hours from now, all of this might be irrelevant. So I don't want to spend a ton of time on it. Now, if he's the pick, we're going to be recording from Amway, like right after the Magic make the 11th pick. And it's pretty evident that they're done, at least in the first round. And then we can talk about this like at nauseum about just kind of what it means. But just keep an eye on it. NBA, never believe anything. People like the discourse on like magic Twitter and in a little bit on Reddit, when we talk about like, Oh, like the magic don't leak anything. It, it doesn't mean that you can't believe anything that you read, but you don't want to put a ton of stock into something. And that is true. The magic don't really leak anything. If something is being leaked, it's either from another team, from a, an agent, usually somebody trying to create their own leverage, trying to benefit themselves. Maybe the Magic may leak things about other teams and other players to try to create leverage for themselves. I believe that can be the case for sure. But the reason that we always say, like, don't believe things that you're reading is because everybody's got an agenda. Everybody's trying to benefit themselves by leaking any kind of information. And a lot of times leaks don't really end up being anything at all. So when you read something, just don't freak out. Don't put a ton of stock into what you're reading message that I would preach is just like, wait until it actually happens. We say that all the time with this front office. Don't believe anything is going to happen until it has already happened. Yeah. Today's episode is brought to you 
by our wonderful patrons, the folks that help financially support each and every episode. This episode, we have a very special new patron, Bonnie Turner, Jeff's aunt, Franz fan forever. I think this is Jeff Turner's aunt, if I'm to believe what I'm what I'm reading here. So I really appreciate Aunt Bonnie, uh, aunt Bonnie uh, joining the Patreon level. Really, really appreciate that. And then we always shout out our Hall of Fame and Elite Tier patrons every episode. So we'll go ahead and start with Court Cousins, Drew Gooden, Armin, Carson Tulo, Normal, Magic Player History, Gabe Gaines, Magic Static, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, The Distract, Donkey Punch, Dave, Paolo and Franz, is Warmth, Pierre A, Nostalgia, and M&Ms, Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Eduardo Sanchez, Drum, Danimal, Dodo 15, Bobby Skinner, Goaty 93, Teddy Sylvia, Eric Lopez, Fuchsia, Juan Gerardo, Bill Fulton, Edmund Lagone, Jose Esquilin, Destined for Greatness, Caleb Beat, Cannibalism, Ty Mr. TV, Joe Rothfuss, ESPN Really Sucks, Gear 95, Shred, Junior Bruce, Half Reek, and Shahan 177, Bowie the Dawn, Himlo, Ban Himro, RM Prof 221, Ray Pastron, and Magic Kid 714, Spank Too Hard, Soft Taco, Jesse, Johnny B, Fuego Nando, Victor Cologne, Fanimal 72, Irish Magic Mike, Austin Lampy, Random Hustle, Only Franz, Maria, Keith Wallace, Fritz, Nick G, Current C, Kev. A big shout out to all of our patrons. You can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show okay luke let's get into the draft poll that we put out on social media the last couple of days here uh, really just asking magic fans for what their opinion is or what their preference is it moving into the draft we got 359 responses here so let's kind of go through these and and see what we think here so the first if you could pick one of amen thompson cam whitmore and jairus walker who would you select with 49% of the vote, Cam Whitmore was the favorite, followed by Amen Thompson with 45.3% of the vote. So pretty close there. And then Jarris Walker ended up with 5.7%. Luke, what did you think of this uh, this poll in particular? Ain't nobody want Jarris Walker, apparently. <laughs> Which is yeah. funny to me. Um all things considered, I don't, you know, I, I don't think Jairus Walker deserves that, uh, considering how skilled I think he is. But uh, you know, I, I touched on this last episode, right? I took Cam Whitmore over and said I would do it over both Thompson twins. So it was a shock to me, quite honestly. Uh, I, I did put out a tweet the other day that after we recorded and just said, you know, is that a crazy take? And I was very surprised there was like 15 or so replies that were all of them said, no, this is the right take. So that was kind of the precursor to this for me. And, uh, and I still was surprised to see because we got exponentially more input on this than my Twitter, like my tweet did in the replies. So yeah, that that's kind of my, my takeaway, I guess I I'm not shocked, but just because I kind of was given a, uh, a reason to not be earlier in the week with my tweet, but it, it is pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm I'm not totally shocked. I think the same as you, what I'm more shocked by is like the low number of votes that Jarris Walker got. Like I understand being pretty split on a men Tom Center, you know, favoring Cam, you know, a little bit more than than a men, but Jarris Walker with five point seven percent. I guess it's it's really just like a upside kind of thing. Cause I do feel like there's a potential that Jarris has like the lowest floor of those guys. You know, a men mm-hmm. Like the playmaking is there, like the defense is there, but if the three point shot never comes around, and then like Cam Whitmore, obviously there are some concerns uh, just about like you know playmaking, obviously and shot making ability. Uh, but Jarris, you know, good defender, you know, uh, good size, good feel offensively. You could argue like projects just as good of a shooter as Cam Whitmore, maybe even a little bit better, like depending on your opinion um, on those guys. So yeah, it was just kind of surprised that Jairus got the you know low amount of votes that he did. Next one here. Do you want to keep both picks? This was just a yes or no with 66% of the vote. Yes. And 33.9% of the vote. No, that's crazy to me. What's crazy. I didn't think that it'd be like that. I thought it might be flipped. Really? I didn't think, well, yeah, just keeping both picks. I didn't, I don't want to keep both picks necessarily. I'm not going to be, you know, mad if we do, but I my preference is what I said earlier, you trade 11 for a shooter. 
or you are signing a free agent, you trade 11 for future stuff, like whatever. I just don't, I really don't care to bring in two young guys. That's what I've been preaching the whole time. Surely don't want to bring in that third one with that second round pick. So you this was surprising. You shiny to new toys in front of people. They, they, they want bite them, it every time. You know? It's, it's, it's the, the potential, you know, that's there. Where you, you draft this? a veteran. I want us to keep both picks, you know, cause I would love to take a swing at six, whether it's, a SAR or, you know, Cam, if he's there and then Grady Dick, Jordan Hawkins, like either one of those guys at 11, I'll, I'll be ecstatic, you know, to have those guys. So upside swing at six, you get your shooter at 11. I'm, I'm good with that. I, I do understand though, like, you know, you're drafting for a guy that you know what you're going to get if you're, well, you're trading for a guy rather, a note that, that you know what you're going to get with him if it's a vet. Where, like, if you're drafting a rookie, it's like, oh, the allure of what he maybe could be eventually. So, if you have to trade one of these picks, Jonathan, six or 11, which one are you trading? Ooh. I can't just say in a vacuum. It depends on what the trade package would be. Part of me wants to say just keep 11 and draft a shooter and, and get a valuable vet with six, but yeah. I could be persuaded the other way, you know, you take could a get swing a lot at, at six on six. the upside. Or, and then just trade for a, a veteran. You know, you probably have to package some player with eleven if you're really hoping to get a good veteran shooter. But I could be persuaded either way. And yeah, and I think that uh, with like Anthony Black still on the table at six, if Cam Whitmore still on the table at six, depending on who hey, is there, Cam Whitmore might still be on the table at eleven. Uh, apparently, but uh, let's say it's not right. Let's say that what we've heard this week is just a bunch of crap being thrown at the wall by GMs or agents or front offices and etc. And and Cam Whitmore is still valued by teams that are in the seven to ten range, right? If it is Cam Whitmore, Anthony Black, whatever, uh, Jarris Walker, whoever, guys that still could be, uh you know, attractive to other teams in that range or teams behind that want to just move up. That six pick is, in my opinion, far more valuable than 11. So if you're going to, which isn't breaking news, but if you're going to trade one of these picks, I think you could absolutely look at six and because of the return, right? You're going to get at 11, you might get a decent shooter veteran or maybe just a veteran, flat out veteran. But with six, I think you might have a kind of a pick of a better shooter prioritize the shooting as well as you know he's a 27 28 year old next one what kind of player do you want at 11 shooter or best player available and with 71.1 percent of the vote shooter to me this was like the least surprising poll Mm -hmm. out of like out of all of these questions yeah yeah i i this shouldn't catch anybody off guard, right? Except for maybe the people that vote a best player available at 11. Yeah. I don't want, I mean, maybe if you drafted a shooter at six, right? That's the only hypothetical here. I can see it. You draft a shooter and whatever, but um, yeah, I think that this is not a surprise. Would you be mad at like an Asar Thompson, Kobe Bufkin draft though? Would I be mad? If you believe that Kobe Bufkin is the best player available at eleven, I'd be excited about that draft. I don't think I don't think I'd be. Yeah, I could get over it in terms of not getting a shooter. But if it all rely, I really do, really do enjoy having a front office that I can trust. Because if I didn't trust them, if this was Hennigan, and you put him in a time machine, and somehow he stumbles his way into the situation that we're in. And he has the opportunity, and he does that. I'm not trusting that he's drafting a, a shooter at all. I mean, uh, signing a shooter at all. But with Jeff and John, if those are your two picks, I, I would be willing to bet a lot you're at least signing one shooter this summer. Right. I don't think they're dumb. And I think we all know, even without having to do a deep dive, what the Magic need. Next one, who do you prefer, Asar Thompson or Taylor Hendricks? With 57.1% of the vote, Asar Thompson over Taylor Hendricks. I'm not surprised at this. I'm, I think it's pretty obvious Asar has like the higher upside. I'm surprised it was this close. I yeah. think that's the only thing I'm surprised about. I, I thought that uh, Hendricks, I know that he was getting a lot of love early on. He was getting a lot of love for me early on. Early on, 
I, I, I went on uh, Mark Moses in Orlando, his uh, radio show, the, right after the lottery. And I said, because I was so high on shooting and, and all that, I said Taylor Hendricks at six. And I, I think that that's where a lot of Magic fans were at that time, honestly. But time has passed. People grow. <laughs> I, I grew. And uh, that's no longer my answer. It would absolutely be uh, Star Thompson. And I, I, I think that it, it would, I would, if you had to make me give like a percentage split, like my confidence or like what I would want and prefer, I'd give you 80 20. Like I take a SAR at 80% versus that. It, Taylor Hendricks' sense has kind of presented just a few things that would concern me uh, over a SAR. Speaking of growing, Grady Dick and Jordan Hawkins are considered by many to be the best two shooters in this class. Which do you prefer? And with 79.7% of the vote, Grady Dick, does this, uh, Surprise you at all? I got almost eighty percent, eighty, almost eighty twenty. Grady Dick to Jordan Hawkins. No, this doesn't surprise me. It it's got to be the me. name, right? Because like, yeah. I don't. I see. Yes. I see both sides of the conversation, just from like a skill set aspect. You know, mm-hmm. Grady Dick is. How can I put this? He's taller. Mm. Um, probably right now a little bit better. Uh. I don't even want to say equipped, but I have to say equipped. <laughs> Better equipped to be, you know, a defender right now. But in terms of like if you're just talking about the shooting, like they're incredibly close. Like Jordan Hawkins is potentially a better shooter, especially when we're talking about moving, you know, as a, a movement shooter coming off of screens and whatnot. So I, I was a little bit surprised that it's this, you know, wide of a margin. But it's got to just be the name. That's what I really believe. If here's a better question here, um, if the Magic draft Grady Dick, how long is it before we stop making jokes? Probably never. <laughs> you don't think that so? would you be think? my guess? But Probably do you think never. at some point we get annoyed by the fact that, like, yes, our minds can't turn that off, but at the same time, it's like, man, I'm I literally just want to mention Grady Dick for a performance that he had. Oh man, this is gonna be rough, man. Yeah, it is yeah, unreal. Okay, all right, um, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. I this doesn't really shock me at all. I think Grady Dick just has a lot of popularity. Who do you consider to be an untouchable in regard to draft night trade? So there's a, like a multitude of options here: just Paolo Bancaro, Paolo Bancaro, and Franz Wagner. Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter Jr. Paolo Bancaro, Franz Varner, Wendell Carter Jr., Markel Fultz. Paolo Bancaro, Franz Varner, Wendell Carter Jr., Markel Fultz, Jalen Suggs. Paolo Bancaro, Franz Varner, Wendell Carter Jr., Markel Fultz, Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony. What's interesting here is just Paolo Bancaro by himself got the lowest amount of votes. That mm. is interesting. The purple did. The... uh Paolo Bancaro, Franz, Wendell, Markel, Jalen got the lowest at 7%, I think, right? Nope. Oh, Paolo no, Bancaro, I was looking at the wrong shade of blue. Percent. How dare you correct, to correct me? I, listen, I was the, the wrong overwhelming shade of blue. majority with 43.5% is Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner, followed by Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter Jr., Markel Fultz. Where do you fall with this? Who are your untouchables? I, we already mentioned this like five minutes ago. Paolo and Franz. Everyone else, it would kill me to see a lot of these guys go, but I think everybody else, it would be difficult to upgrade at a few of these guys that we're talking about, but it is possible. Paolo yeah. and Franz, given the position they play, the skill set, the age, the contract status, like to me, those are the only true untouchables on this team what, right now. What, who, what is the... So obviously, Paolo and Franz is both of our number one options here, right? If you have to label a number two, who's your number two? Like the the number two answer from you? I'm probably just gonna throw Markel in there. Okay, it's close with him and Wendell, mm-hmm. but I do think, like, I mean, you could really have health questions about both of them. 
But like Markel broke the toe last year. It's kind of a freak thing. Before that, it was the TOS, which was like, you know, undiagnosed. Nobody really knew what it was. Since they figured it out, it hasn't been an issue at all. And then he had like a major injury, which was the ACL and has looked fantastic since coming back from that. Wendell Carter Jr., it's like his entire career, it's like nagging injury after nagging injury. Yeah. So for Uh, whatever reason, I don't even know if it makes sense. I'm just a little bit more confident in Markel's health long term. Okay. I I think for me, I would be rocking with Paolo, Franz, and Wendell. That's, That's That's my number two. Everybody knows my opinion on Wendell. I think with his contract mixed with what he brings you, I, if he stayed healthy, this is a runaway, in my opinion. I agree but, with that, but I, I think that uh, the Markel, I love Markel, and I do think that it would suck to lose him. But I wouldn't say that he's. Uh, I understand the impact of him. I've already talked about it, but I, I don't think that I would call him untouchable in any type of scenario. My outlook on him hasn't changed in, since we've been doing the show, which is as far as like my projection for him. Really good player for a long time. That's, that's it, right? Like, I think we both can agree that it's Paolo and Franz by like a wide margin. The results yes. here show that. And in my opinion, like it's, I, ha- I would have a, a tough time calling Markel or Wendell or any, really anyone else on the roster an untouchable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is strictly just my number two, for sure. Right. Number two option, yeah. The last one here with the number six pick, do you want to draft based on potential or fit? And with 66.9% of the vote, potential. I'm not really surprised by this. I would just, I would have thought it would be a little bit wider of a margin. Like not much, maybe a few points here and there. But yeah, number six, I just feel like the guys that are slated to be there you really should most like mostly be looking at the potential and the upside. Well, well because what you're, if you're looking at fit, you're looking at someone that defends and shoots the three ball, but there's not a lot of guys getting a ton of chatter at six that can really shoot the crap out of the ball. So I think then that's a, a large reason why if they could, what? they'd probably be out of our range. They'd probably that's be closer true. to four than six. If any of the guys we've talked about at six could shoot, yes, absolutely. But so, yeah, I just don't think that that should be a surprise that that's the way it is. And then at 11, people were talking about a shooter right earlier in the poll because that's if everybody's pretty much on the same page as far as what you're getting at six, who's available, what's realistic and what you're going to do at 11. This was a fun exercise. Anytime you're doing a poll with Magic fans, you know, you, you got to be a little bit careful. I never know. You, you, well, you, well, one, you never know the way that it's going to go. But the Magic also have you know history with polls. You know, the famous or the infamous Orlando Sentinel poll with whether or not the Orlando Magic should offer Shaquille O'Neal a max contract, and you know, obviously he's claimed that that bothered him a bit. So, <laughs> all right, Luke, let's go ahead and wrap this off. Wrap this up, I should say. Good grief, wrap this <laughs> off. That sounds dirty. That sounds like something we. Somebody would say about a a wing out of Kansas. I'm not going to say his name. Let's wrap this up. Final draft thoughts heading into tonight. First of all, I want to know how you're feeling. And then I want you to give me a prediction. Like what, not necessarily do you want to happen? What do you think the front office is going to do? I was talking to Kevin, producer Kevin last night. And I said, would you be, would there be any part of you that's disappointed if, the Magic just stamp pat at everything, right? They draft at six, they draft at 11, and throw away the second round. I mean, I don't care. That doesn't really count. And he said, no, I'm not really going to you know, feel any type of way about it. And I I genuinely, I think I, I will be a little disappointed. It'll be obviously dependent on who gets drafted. But I, I really, I really do lean... You know, wanting it to be that, you know, you draft at six or draft at 11 and then you trade the other, whatever, for an asset, right? As I said. That being said, I'm going to say that I'm going to say that they stand pat. 
as as least fun as that is in my opinion it's still gonna be good like don't get me wrong but the trading up would be electric uh trading for a shooter would be electric that's already established in this league there's a lot to get excited about tomorrow night i'm not regardless i'm not gonna walk away upset but uh, it may be a slight disappointment but i'll get over it within about 10 minutes so I'm nervous just because like it's an important night for the franchise and I want it to go well and I want the I want it to look 10 years from now and be like that was a home run draft. We added one or or two whether it be through the draft or through trade, multiple pieces that helped either contribute to us winning a title or you know, we were able to turn them into assets that helped us make the moves that helped us win a title. I I want to look back and think fondly about this draft in the future. So I'm nervous just because it's a big night for the organization, but, and I do reserve the right to you know, change my mind depending on what happens, but I've been pretty vocal about wanting a few guys in, in certain ranges. And if like the night doesn't go to my plans at all, there will be a moment of mm, like, man, mm-hmm. like I, this isn't what I wanted, but Ultimately, I'm going into the night trusting the front office. If they believe Anthony Black is the answer at six, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see the, the long-term plan. If you're taking Anthony Black at six, you're, you're betting on him being like your starting point guard of the future. At least that's how I feel. Maybe that's not the case, but that's going to be my thinking. And then I do want them to keep both picks. Because I, I, it's just more exciting to me. Like the potential, again, of, oh, well, hey, if we trade for this guy, we kind of know what he is, right? Which is good. He's going to contribute to the team. Like, oh, we don't really know what this young kid is, and we can kind of watch him grow, especially if it's a you know, wing I, from Kansas. I can't wait. And, um, yeah, or if it's Jordan Hawkins or if it's whoever. Like, to me, that is the most fun outcome other than, like, you know, trading up for Scoot. But then, or Brandon Miller, and then that just adds a ton of other questions that we then have to answer. So you, Jeff Weltman mm-hmm. said, hey, we can go in a lot of different directions. They really can do that. Yeah. And regardless of who the picks are, I'm just going to trust that they're the right picks or the right decisions for the team. So outside of that, I'm excited to see everybody at the draft. It's going to be a great time. And you know what's also super exciting, and it's hard to think much about it or take time to think about it even google it look it up because you're so just like engulfed with the draft and getting to the draft and looking at prospects tomorrow night we will be two weeks and one day from the start of summer league so if you do if you're like me and you would like for the magic to keep one trade one you can get excited if the magic still take just if they don't trade anything they take both because that means in two weeks and one day, you get to see two out of you know the the, the five in the starting lineup on summer league on the, the start of summer league be two guys that this front office believes is going to contribute and be a key piece in the future of this team. I think it's really exciting, and we're not far away from it, thankfully. All right, folks. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this draft primer. Everybody have a good time tonight. The future is very bright, really, almost regardless of what happens tonight you know at the draft don't forget before and after the draft our boy ben is going to be outside amway center getting your predictions before the draft getting your reactions after the draft in the draft party we're going to be sitting in section 106 come by say what's up and then we're going to have an episode out what is that friday morning the day after the draft probably there's a chance it could be up thursday night who knows but yeah it'll be there for you Friday morning at the absolute latest. So let's have a good time. Go magic. Let's have a good draft. Everybody enjoy it. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. So for Luke Sylvia, this has been Jonathan Osborne. You guys have been listening to the six man show. We will catch you guys next time. See you. Thanks for listening to the sixth man show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Six Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!